Hello and welcome to the OTB channel. Well, today I'm going to do something that I swore I would never do. I'm going to install and do a quick review of a Gen 2 based distro called Calculate Linux. Why am I doing this? Well, Ben Fitzpatrick has used Calculate as the base for his new spin, and uh, he asked me to take a quick look. So, let's do that. See you after the intro. Okay, welcome back. So Calculate Linux, why am I looking at this? Well, basically because Ben asked me to have a look at it and uh, I was quite surprised when he asked me. I said, Gen 2, I don't do Gen 2, mate. And he said, no, no, this is Calculate. It's uh, much more straightforward. It's got lots of binary packages and various tools to help you out. And I said, uh, okay, I'll give it a look. <laughs> Not, and I need to say this right from the word go, that I have anything against Gen 2. In fact, it has many of the features that I like about a distro. It's independent, so it's not a fork of a fork of a fork. Um, it's It necessitates a user getting under the hood and playing around with it to build it up. It starts off from quite a, a basic installation, and then you add to it and make it your own as you go on to a much larger extent in fact than arch does because with gen 2 you can even tweak use flags um, to really get the system that you want at the end of the day of course in order to do that one of the big parts of gen 2 is it's a source-based application or a source-based distro and this is where my problem with Gen 2 lies. I just don't have the patience. I have installed uh, Gen 2 from scratch before. Uh, it took hours and hours and hours to install. Um, and it failed the first two times. I got it right on the third occasion. And I managed to install an XFCE desktop. I ran it for a few days. And then it broke while I was doing an upgrade. So I said, right enough's enough it's not for me there's just too much to learn in order to understand this system but i completely understand if you like the system you've got the knowledge to run it i haven't uh, and i haven't got the patience to be honest but hey ho it is what it is so we're going to have a look at uh, calculate linux which I'm led to believe by Ben takes some of that pain away. Well, let's start by having a look at their website. So you should see in front of you the uh, website for Calculate Linux. It's uh, www.calculate-linux.org. And right at the beginning, it says it's a fast and functional, user-friendly Linux distribution based on Gen 2, and still backwards compatible with it. Okay, that's interesting. So could this be a way to get Gen 2 up and running quickly and then to play with it? Possibly. It maintains an optimal balance between state-of-the-art and stability, providing the latest versions of applications and stable versions of libraries. Okay, but it is a rolling release distro. And it comes in a number of flavors. If I just switch to the download page now, um, you can download the desktop version and decide to configure it with the desktop uh, environment of your choice. You can download it as a server, which is uh, no graphical environment, or a containerized version which you can run in the cloud by the look of it. Okay, so you've got some options there, and you can download the week weekly releases here, which are called nightly. Now, the version that Ben's put together uh, includes more themes than your standard Calculate Linux would include, and it includes a lot of software that comes bundled in the ISO. 
Uh, I will leave a link to the ISO um, that he sent to me, uh, which is on a Google Drive, if you wanted to try that. But by all means, you can try this one as well. Um, so, okay. So how much documentation is there? Well, there is a wiki, which seems to have some useful options here. It tells you how to use a command called cl-update, which I believe is calculate Linux's front end, if you like, to uh, the portage tree. And it does all the heavy lifting that you would normally have to do manually with uh, Emerge in a Gen 2 system. And it also talks about how you uh, install packages. And it looks to me there like you have you use the emerge command to install either binaries or source code uh, versions of the packages. Ben has told me that he has also put in a, a graphical front end for installing packages called Karoo. So we'll have a look at that afterwards. Uh, but what about the documentation generally? Um, let's just click on this. Actually, we may need to go back to the main page here and have a look at the wiki. So we, we have a number of things here, frequently asked questions, installation guide, working with Calculate, so system updates, creating user uh, accounts, etc., etc. So, okay, it does have some sort of documentation. Interestingly enough, I found that the adding and removing software link here um, doesn't seem to have a hyperlink to it. Uh, nevertheless, I was able to uh, find it anyway by uh, just doing a Google search. So we've got some documentation there. I, I wouldn't say looking at it, it immediately strikes me as user-friendly. Um, it seems to be largely based on uh, command line uh, commands, merge world, clean package, Okay, something for you to look at if you decide to go for this. So, Calculate Linux, Gen 2 based system, but meant to be easy to administer. It's been around for quite a while, this. It's, it's I think, 2008, 2009, perhaps slightly before that. So, it's not a brand new distro. But like any Gen 2-based distro, it's going to only appeal to a small minority of uh, Linux desktop users, certainly. So enough said. Let's get on. Let's boot it up, see what we think. Right, so you should see in front of you the uh, screen of Calculate Linux. I booted it up in VirtualBox, and uh, it didn't actually adjust its resolution during the boot process or, or when the desktop launched. But I was able to set it up on a full HD uh, 1080 uh, resolution as soon as it was booted. So I'm presuming the guest editions are already installed. So what you can see is a really plain looking XFCE desktop, very similar to the, the other desktop uh, that we looked at with... Uh, Storm OS, Ben's other um, build, but this is, of course, based on Gentoo, or rather Calculate Linux. All I want to do at this stage is run through the install process and see how straightforward it is. So there's an install icon on the desktop. It looks like it's a one-click install, so let's just launch that and follow along. I must admit I'll have to disable the uh, one-click action uh, as soon as possible, because I'm really not a fan. Okay, let me make this full screen. So this doesn't seem to be Ubiquity. It doesn't seem to be Calamaris. It's its own thing. Very colourful, lots of balloons. We already uh, have English United Kingdom set as default, so it's picked that up. And uh, an option there to click for advanced settings. Keyboard layout. Well, again, United Kingdom, hardware clock type. Let's just set that to UTC and uh, click Next. 
I have played with this a little bit before, and uh, it's different to another installer, I have to say. So installation image. So XFCE, so it's already clicked it. Click for advanced settings. I don't know how necessary it is to click uh, the advanced settings option each time, uh, although it doesn't seem that responsive as far as that's concerned, but uh, just takes a bit more time. So filter by distribution. Um, okay, let's set XFCE. Filter by process architecture, 64-bit. And hit next. I'm guessing my way through this. Right, installation type. Do we want to erase the disk and install Calculate Linux or something else? Um, it's not making a huge amount of sense to me, this on, uh, on the face of it, but let me have a look. I could set ext4 for the root partition. EXT4 for the data partition, DOS type as a partition table. Um, do you know what? I'm just going to stick with uh, Erase Disk and install Calculate Linux and see what it does. So if I click Next, right, so what's it doing? It's creating uh, a root partition. It's also creating... Uh, another partition var calculate or i wonder why it's mounting that maybe that's a data partition and it's creating a separate home partition as well so that's an unusual uh setup so root home fine but var calculate maybe something specific to this distro use uu ID. Okay, look, let's just click next. Migrate network settings or manually configure the network. Let's click advance just to see what it says. Again, let's just click next. Okay, so root password. Right, let's set a root password by entering it twice. Okay, and right, so we want to create a user. I see there's already a guest user there, but let's create another one called OTB. Administrator, do we want administrator access for system updates only or full access? Okay, I'm going to select full access and groups. Hmm. I don't know what's included in the default value, so perhaps better to kind of take this guest uh, user that's already created as an example. So if I configure audio, uh, CD-ROM, games, I don't think I need to worry about games. Guest, I don't need to worry about guest. LP. Okay, that's to do with printing. Oops. Come on, go across. LP admin. Yeah, we'll have that. Uh, plug dev. Yeah, we'll have that. Already I'm thinking this isn't exactly user-friendly if you don't know what you're doing. The scanner, I don't need that. Uh, USB. Yeah, we'll have that. Users, okay, the generic group for all users. UUCP, okay, we'll go for that. Video, okay, we'll go for that. And, of course, the wheel group. I'm presuming uh, sudo will already be configured here, but okay. And set the password. Okay, do we want to have a guest account on there as well? I don't think so. Let's just get rid of the guest. Okay, and click. Well, what does it say on click for advanced settings? 
Do we want to encrypt user profiles? No, I don't think so. So let's click next. Audio system, we can choose between Pulse or Alsa. Okay, I'm going to stick with Pulse Audio. Default audio card. Okay, well, I've actually got it disabled on this machine, so click Next. Video driver, let's leave it as auto detection. And what about the, uh, the resolution? Well, let's stick to 1920 by 1080, as that's what I'm going to be using. And let's just click Next. Right, so automatically check uh, updates every 24 hours. Okay, great. Update other overlays. Oh, not entirely sure what that means. Update packages at first boot. Let's leave that as default as well. And click next and see where it takes us now. Start installing one of the options there. Right, so this just gives us an overview of what we've said. So everything's set to UK English. Uh, we're using uh, an installation image. That's all good. Uh, we're erasing the disk to install using a DOS partition table. There's my user. Okay, so that just gives us an overview of what we've done. So let's click Run and see how long this takes. I make it 10, 11. Okay, so uh, we're being told uh, the system has been successfully installed. So that's taken seven minutes, which for a Gen 2 system is uh, pretty good. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shut this system down, make sure the ISO is removed, fire it back up, and we'll have a quick look around the system. And so we're back, and the installation seems to have gone flawlessly, I'm pleased to say. And uh, it's certainly a quick install for Gen 2. So easy Linux from the source. I know it does use some source packages, but I think Calculate Linux is also set up to primarily use binary packages. So I would expect a little bit more speed. So let's start by just very briefly looking at what Ben has installed here. This will, I'm pretty sure, be a, a carbon co copy of a Storm OS just based on Gen 2. Yeah, so we got the catfish file search there. Compare. Lutris and Steam installed already. Uh, the GIMP, which is always good to see. Um, Claws Mail, that's an unusual one. Uh, but uh, have we got Thunderbird as well? No, it appears not, strangely. Okay, but the Zoom client, Discord, Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, Fox, etc., uh, KDEN Live, Clementine, OBS, Spotify by default. The whole of the LibreOffice suite, and I'm I'm seeing Mozilla Thunderbird down there under Office. Let me just check. Did I miss? No, I didn't miss Thunderbird under the internet uh, uh, menu. Strange that Thunderbird is under Office, but never mind. Other. Okay, so it looks like Wine is already installed by default. Then we have system settings, so it's set up for NVIDIA. Ben has also put this package Karoo on. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, which I believe is a graphical front end to uh, the calculator Linux repo, so you can install software from there. Um, what else? QDIRSTAT, I've got no idea. And then we have the Calculate console, which I believe is for um, accessing uh, remote machines and Calculate Linux uh, update. Right, well, 
I mainly want to see what this is like as far as speed is concerned. So I'm going to hit Calculate Linux Update and see what happens. So it's good to see that it's graphical. Having looked through the wiki, I see that you can uh, actually use the command line, though, as well, uh, a command called CLI Update, which uh, works in exactly the same way as any other distro i suppose so what have we got here use only stable updates okay that makes sense uh search for the most appropriate update server yeah okay to speed things up and write stuff that i'm not that familiar with so i'm just going to leave as is um right we've got lots of options here I'm just going to hit run. Let's see what happens. Right, well, that took the uh, best part of 15 minutes to do, searching for dependencies, and it looked like there was only 12 packages to uh, install. I presume they were built from source. I'm now getting this uh, listing packages for removal. Would you like to unmerge these unused packages recommended? Um, I'm just looking through here very quickly. Um, and I'm not sure whether I want to do this or not. Um, I'm going to say no for the time being. Uh, spell check for GTK plus uh, applications. Hmm. Let's just say no to finish this process. So break the process, I presume, and uh, off we go again. Uh, task interrupted, closed. Okay. Maybe that was the wrong thing to do, but uh, <laughs> it's taken long enough. Now, I believe you can actually run an update uh, by the command line as well. Uh, simply running sudo cl update so if i just put in my uh otb is not in the sudo file right so that's a, a little bit of a, a a thing we we're in the wheel group so i'm not quite sure why we're not in the uh, sudo file but let me just log in as root and uh issue vice sudo and we'll just go down to the relevant bit. Um, where are we? Uncomment to allow members of group wheel to execute any command. That would be it. So let's uncomment it and just save that. Let's just write that. Let's see if we can now. Uh -huh. Let me just exit, in fact, exit root and see if we can. Uh, Run that now. OTB is not in the sudo as file. This incident will be reported. Do you know what? I'd probably have to log out and log back in again. Let's just go to root. Apparently, if I run CL update, it would manually do what we've just seen happen in the GUI. So it's checking through the repositories to make sure everything is up to date. And I'm assuming this should come up with you're up to date and there's nothing to do. Generally speaking, I've always found the command line to be faster than GUI packages, but uh, we are talking uh, Gen 2 here, so let's hang fire. Right, so uh, <laughs> that took a while as well, and now it's telling me that Google Chrome needs to be uh, merged. I really don't fancy uh, <laughs> compiling Google Chrome from source during this video, so we'll just leave that as well. Apparently, on uh, this system, you can also use a command line um, command EIX to search for packages. Let's try something easy. NeoFetch. 
and we can see that Neo Fetch is there. So I believe if we want to install that, we can simply type emerge Neo Fetch. Okay, so one job complete apparently. So Neo Fetch should now launch, and it does. Okay, let's come out of this terminal. Um, there we go. Apparently, we also have this uh, thing that Ben's put on, something called Karoo. So let's have a look at this. So, a KDE portage front end. Okay, so we'll follow along and see what it does. Okay, scan the emerge log. Right, and there's all of the packages. So, what should we try and install? Let's, uh, let's just have a look. What have we got here? We have the XFCE terminal. Um, how about if we, let's just search for terminals generally and see what it comes up with. Um, so that's all packages. Hmm. So that's already installed. Well, I'm afraid I've played with this Karoo, um, uh, front end for installing packages and uh it doesn't seem to have separate categories it'll tell me install packages it'll tell me updates uh but when i click on all packages from what i can see it doesn't actually have any that uh i haven't already got installed so I'm looking at their website over here, and apparently there should be a number of categories here, such as apps, development, games, KDE, et cetera, et cetera, and it's not there. My guess, then, therefore, is that it's not configured. In fact, I think I've got it running twice now, so let me just quit. So that's a fail, I'm afraid. Um, so much for that. So if you install this, you're going to have to keep to the command line so let's do something simple let's have a look at the desktop settings and see what wallpapers we have in here okay so we have some standard and i'm presuming these are calculate linux wallpapers which are quite nice quite plain but at the end of the day nothing special is there anything else around? Let's have a look. What about in backgrounds generally? Aha, uh -huh, Storm Gen 2. I presume Ben's added that in. And we have some Gen 2 wallpaper. That's quite nice. So is that. There's the Storm OS. Oh, right, okay. I think I quite like that. So, okay. So, a decent selection of uh, wallpaper. What have we got as far as um, themes are concerned? We might have to go into the menu for that. Let's just bring down settings. And go to appearance. So, we have the calculate theme here, which I can't say... I'm that much of a fan of. I would much rather have something like Q Ogre Dark. That's quite nice. What about icons? Anything but that horrible default look. Uh, that's okay. Or we could have it uh, the arc icons. Okay. So all good. Um, you know XFCE though, guys, so I'm not going to uh, go into the details of what's on this Storm ISO. Um, it's pretty much what we saw on the other Storm, the Storm OS. So, yeah, it's an easy install. 
And yes, the update actually worked, even though it took a while. But the Karoo didn't. Um, maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe it's not been configured yet. One other thing that uh, is worth saying, um, let me just uh, launch a terminal. When I first installed this, there didn't appear to be uh, a dot bash RC. Um, but there was a copy in ETC Scale. So I've uh, I copied that across and uh, tried to uh, source it. But this bash RC immediately asks for NeoFetch. So it was complaining there was a problem, which is why I've now installed NeoFetch. And, uh, but Ben has created a couple of, uh, useful aliases there. So to install, you would do sudo emerge, whatever. So INS NeoFetch, for instance, CL update to update the system. And there's an upgrade command there, which is emerge web rsync and sudo CL update. Do you know what? Let's just run UPG and see what happens. I may uh, well live to regret this. OTB is not on the uh, file. Okay, right. So let's just copy that. And SU. and run that and see what happens. The current sync type attribute, Gen2 is not set to rsync or web rsync. Hmm. Okay. Do you know what? I think I've seen enough. <laughs> Let's go and have a chat. Right, so uh, what do I think of that? Well, Kudos to Ben uh, for putting together uh, a decent XFC desktop. Uh, looks very similar to Storm OS, and uh, certainly it comes pretty much fully loaded with most of the things that you're going to need. And, uh, yeah, great. And Ben, I know, likes playing with Gen 2 and Linux from scratch, etc., etc. So he likes to get under the hood and tweak and fiddle. Uh, to a much larger extent than I do. But for your average desktop user, well, I would say I wouldn't describe this as user-friendly simply because of the reliance on the command line and uh, interpreting what each command does. In fact, I would say if you really want to understand what's going on under the surface, you need to hit the Gen 2 wiki and... Uh, read through that in in real detail but if gen 2 is something that you fancy having a go at um it might be a good way to get you up and running with a, a gen 2 system so that you can learn it and then eventually perhaps move on to uh, a full vanilla gen 2 install i did find myself asking the question wh what is the use case for this um, because I tend to feel, and I'm talking about the desktop variety specifically here. If you are the sort of person who likes to fiddle and get under the hood and is fascinated by Gen 2, wouldn't you just install Gen 2? If you haven't got the patience, uh, to understand the system, well, there are other options. Arch, for instance, allows you to build up the distro as you want it. And if you've got a thing about System D, because Gen 2 is OpenRC by default, although it can be System D if you want, but it's OpenRC by default, well, there's other distros. As, as you know, I'm running Void at the moment, which, which uses Runit as it's in its system. So Gen 2 isn't the only option. Um, so... I think it's got quite a limited use case. So, and, and I think that use case is going to be limited to people who want to run Gen 2, but just want to get something up and running first so that they can learn the system. In terms of functionality, well, the uh, 
graphical update tool did work, but it took 15 minutes to install from what I could see uh, 12 packages. Arch would install hundreds of packages in less than that time. So it comes back to patience. I, I, I wouldn't have the patience to run it. And uh, I can just imagine if you left it for a week or two that there's going to be many, many packages there to update. So it's going to take a lot longer. What about the Karoo uh, package installer? I fully accept that it might have been me not seeing how to configure this, um, but it didn't seem to, to work for searching for packages that weren't already installed. Um, if that was configured, and I'm sure it's just a configuration option, um, I'm sure it would be great and it would be an easy way for, for you to run the emerge uh, command to install a package of your choice. It's just a shame it didn't work for me. There was a few paper cuts there, like the Bash RC still being stuck in Scale and not being in my home directory, but they're relatively minor things. Um, so it worked. Would I use it? That VM will be deleted at the end of this video because I don't have the patience, I'm afraid. But that's not to say anything about the distro. If you want to get your feet wet with Gen 2, this may be an easier option. Would I call it user-friendly? No. Uh, and would it be for the beginning Linux user? Absolutely not. So this was just a quick look. That's all I've got to say about this, really. Uh, please come and join me on Reddit or my Facebook group. Don't forget to join me on Library. Hope you enjoyed this video and stay well, everyone. Cheers.